When I first started blogging and making YouTube videos, I really wanted to find out more about SEO and how to rank on Google. I wanted to write these articles for my website that would show up on the first page of Google for free without paying for pay-per-click ads because I'm kind of a cheapskate. But the more I delved into this world of SEO, the more complicated it became and the more I, my brain just wanted to explode until I finally figured out the easiest way to do keyword research and that is Welcome back friends, I'm Karen Carr and on this channel I teach real estate agents how to attract loyal clients who actually want to work with you instead of cold calling because friends don't let friends cold call. Once I discovered the magic of SEO and blogging and YouTube, my business literally exploded in a very little time at all. Now SEO just simply means the way that you show up in Google search results or YouTube search results and in what position. So let's say that you're on Google and you do a search for the best gated communities in Savannah. If you've written a blog post or you've done a YouTube video, it can show up in the Google search results on page one at the very top if you do it right. And when people see that and they see that it's not an ad, because I don't know about you, when I do a Google search now, the top results and it says ad right there, I kind of skip over them. I don't click on them anymore. I know that they're ads and so I'm kind of resistant to clicking on those because I know that they're advertisements. I want these to be real, honest to goodness, articles, videos, blog posts that are gonna help answer my question without trying to sell me something. I don't know if the general consumer feels the same way, but I often skip over the ads and go straight to the organic search results. So when I lived in the Atlanta suburbs and I was doing a lot of blogging, I needed to find out about SEO. I didn't know anything about it. I had had my brokerage provided website for many, many, many years, never got a single lead off of it. Well, maybe I'd gotten one or two leads, but they didn't turn into clients and they certainly didn't turn into closings and commission checks. Then I went out and I got my own website, but it was not a website that was SEO optimized, meaning I could make all this content, but it still wasn't showing up in Google searches. I do not want to write a blog post that shows up on page seven of Google search results because where's the best place to hide a dead body? On the second page of Google. Because yeah, nobody goes there. If I'm gonna take all this time to write a really great article, it's gotta rank and it's gotta rank on page one, preferably at the top, above the fold, as they say. Above the fold is newspaper speak for when you actually had, you remember newspapers? Like you'd get a newspaper at the foot of your driveway, they like threw it, little, little kids on their bicycles, they threw you a newspaper. No, just me. The newspaper was folded in half and so it had to be on the top of page one above the fold because that's where all the eyeballs immediately went. So we are trying to be above the fold in the digital marketing age. In order to be above the fold, you have to know what the people are looking for so that you can give them the information that is most valuable to them. And we do that with keyword research. Now, Google has a free keyword research tool called the Google Keyword Planner. If you have a Google account, you can log into the Google Keyword Planner. However, in my opinion, it is not very user-friendly at all. And back at the time when I was starting to use it, they made a change where you had to create an account and you had to actually start running an ad in order to be able to even use it. So I had to create an ad and turn it on and then immediately turn it off again before it started charging me any money just to be able to use their keyword planning tool, which I thought was kind of lame. There was also a tool called SEMrush, which was very great. It was a great tool and very effective, but it was also very expensive and you know, I'm all about the free and cheap tools whenever possible. We get nickeled and dimed to death in the real estate industry, right? I just had a brand new agent join my team and she was like, oh my God, they keep asking me for more and more money. Yes, I know, they do. You got, you got the dues, you got your office dues, you got your board dues, you got your super key, you got your MLS fees, you got all this stuff before you even get your first client to start working with. It's a lot of money going out the door before you have any money coming in. I'm all about using what you got and using tools that are free. Once you start closing business and getting lots of commission checks from these blog posts and YouTube videos, by all means, start paying for some tools. But at the beginning, when money is scarce, free is good. 
Enter Keywords Everywhere. Keywords Everywhere used to be free. In fact, if you've read my book, YouTube for Real Estate Agents, learn how to get free real estate leads and never cold call again. It was free when I wrote that book. Then I had to go publish a revision because they started charging for it. It's now $10 for 100,000 search credits at the time of this recording. Don't hold it against me if they change their pricing. I'm making this video in January of 2021. It is $10 for 100,000 search credits. And if you're the typical agent, that'll probably last you for a year. So it's not free, but it's almost free. And no, this video is not sponsored. I just love Keywords Everywhere so much that I'm always talking about it. Yo, Keywords Everywhere, I would love it if you created an affiliate program. So how do you use it? You go to their website, you say, I want $10 worth of credits. If you want to get $50 worth of credits, you can, but you don't need it. Just get the $10 worth of credits. After you pay for it, it sends you an email with an API key. Now you have to go over to the Chrome Web Store if you're using Chrome as your browser and you download the Keywords Everywhere Chrome extension. The instructions are slightly different if you have Firefox, but that's okay. Just follow the instructions that they send you. When you get that API key, you open up the extension on your browser, you paste in the API key, and you can change some of these settings. Once this thing is installed, now when you go to Google and you do a search, so let's say that you have an idea to do a video about your seven favorite seafood restaurants in the city where you live. You go to Google and you type a search into the search bar seafood restaurants in Savannah, seafood restaurants in Dallas, seafood restaurants in Peoria, Illinois. You're typing it in to see what kind of demand there is for that keyword. So the Keywords Everywhere plugin makes it so that the search volume, the cost per click, and the competition score are right underneath the Google search bar. If you find that it gets zero volume, that means that nobody is really searching for that. But if you find that it gets 100 searches or 200 searches or 3 million searches, that's how many people are typing that exact phrase into the Google search bar each and every month. So if we're gonna make a video, we wanna know that people are actually interested in the topic. I skip over the cost per click section. I'm not running ads, I'm not driving traffic to my YouTube channel by running ads to it. So it doesn't matter to me what the cost per click is. It is kind of interesting though. So let's say you do a search for homes for sale in West Bloomfield, Michigan, and you see that there are 1900 searches a month being done for this exact phrase. That means that 1900 people a month are typing that into the Google search bar verbatim, homes for sale in West Bloomfield, Michigan. Now I kind of skip over the cost per click because again, I'm not running an ad, so it doesn't really matter to me what people would expect to pay per click if they ran a PPC ad. But it's always interesting to see if the cost per click was $8, that tells me that this is a very profitable keyword. People are willing to spend a lot of money per click because those clicks get people over to their website and they're converting into paying clients. Now the competition score is 0.2. So even though the cost per click is pretty high, people would not bid that much if they were not getting results from that ad. So that means on a scale of 0.01 to 0.99, it's getting 0.20. So it's low competition, right? One to 33 would be low, 33 to 66 would be medium, 66 and above would be high. This is getting a 20, right? 0.20, 20. Low is one to 33, it's 20. Pretty low. So you decide that you're gonna write a blog post or make a video or both on homes for sale in West Bloomfield, Michigan, because you know that that is a topic people are interested in. Now, what would you say in that video or the blog post? It could be any number of things. It doesn't have to just be a laundry list of all of the homes that are currently on the market in that area. As of today, there are 972 homes on the market, 645 have gone pending, and there were 17 sales. No, you don't have to make it boring. You could certainly talk about how do you find homes for sale in West Bloomfield, or which are the best homes for sale, or which are the cheapest homes for sale, or which are the most expensive homes for sale. So you can be making videos 
using that keyword as a jumping off point for what people are searching and what people want to learn more about so that they will show up in the Google search results. Now, why does it matter if you rank on page one? Well, you've all been there. We've made a video where nobody looked at it. It was simply crickets. And early on with my YouTube channel, when I hardly had any subscribers and nobody was really watching my videos, you would make this video that you thought was going to be a slam dunk. It would be so good. And then crickets. Nobody watched it. And quite frankly, we work too hard to have zero results, right? If we're going to spend the time to make this video, by God, people are going to see it. I'm going to make you see it. And preferably a lot of those people that see it want to buy a house where I live and will hire me for the transaction. Like that is the goal. Now you want to go into your keywords everywhere settings and change a bunch of these settings to make it jump out at you when you come across a good keyword. So we do that by clicking on the icon on your toolbar and clicking on the gear icon that says settings. Once you go into the settings, this is where you've pasted in your API key. I like to leave my country as global. That means if I were to change it to United States and somebody in Germany was searching for homes for sale in Savannah, I would not know that because I've only set it to people in the US. So I like to leave it as global. I don't care where in the world you're living. If you're doing a search about real estate in my area, I'm going to take that into consideration. So I keep it as global as my default. Under enable and disable metrics, I like to have highlight volume and highlight competition filled out. If your channel is brand new and you are new to making videos or you are new to blogging, if you do not have any real authority yet in the eyes of Google and YouTube, I would recommend that you set your highlight competition as more than a hundred and less than a thousand. If it's less than 100 searches a month, there's not a ton of demand for the topic, so we're not really sure that it's worth your time to make content about it if nobody is looking for it. And if it's greater than 1,000, you probably do not yet have the authority in the eyes of Google and YouTube to be able to rank at the top of the search results for it. So let's go for the low-hanging fruit, more than 100 searches, less than 1,000 searches a month, so that you can start ranking for these things. Then you can start going after the more competitive keywords later. But for right now, let's keep it between 100 and 1,000, because I want you to rank. I want you to rank at the top of page one. If it gets less than 100, let's say it gets 85, that's okay if this is a topic that is about buying or selling real estate in your area and they are raising their hands and identifying the fact that they are in the market to do a transaction, you might still decide that that's a worthwhile keyword and you are going to make content on it even though it gets a little bit less than 100. Totally your prerogative. Then when we go to highlight competition, I want it to be low competition all the time. I might consider going a smidge into medium competition if I'm already ranking for a whole bunch of keywords, but at the beginning, I want only low. So for me personally, I say highlight competition less than 0.33. That's it. Like if it's above 0.33, it's probably going to be more complicated for me to rank for it. And as a newer channel, I would recommend that you go for the easy things first, then build up the authority and start going for the harder ones. Now where it says highlight color, you can click on that and there's a color wheel and you pick whatever color you want. I like lime green. It just jumps out at me. If you want yellow, if you want hot pink, if you want whatever, you pick the color that you like. And then on supported websites, it's saying, where do you want us to gather this data? Is it only from Google searches or is it Google and YouTube and Google trends and Bing and, 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 and. Now I don't search on eBay and I don't search on Etsy because as far as I know, people are not selling homes on Etsy. So you can unclick the ones that do not make sense for you and then check the rest. So if we go back to our homes for sale in West Bloomfield example, I see on the right hand side, this button that says find long tail keywords for home for sale in West Bloomfield, Michigan. And now keywords everywhere is going to show me a bunch of other keywords that might be good topics for future content. As they start populating on this chart, if they meet the criteria that I set, so between 100 and 1000 and under 0.33, they're going to be highlighted in green. So they immediately jump right off the page at me to show me these would be good keywords for me. I have used keywords everywhere since day one with my channel. I also use TubeBuddy, I also use vidIQ, but when it comes to doing keyword research, 
Keywords Everywhere is definitely the one that I like the best. So now that you know how to use it, do you know how to rank on page one of Google with your YouTube videos? In this video right here, I talk all about exactly that. So go watch that one next.